Hey to you all, this is Andrew Jones, and this is Overall with me, Andrew Jones. And if you are on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, make sure that you kindly subscribe to this show in order to get the latest episode. And if you're watching this on YouTube, may you kindly click that subscribe button on the bottom of your screen, which is the obligatory statement for anyone with a YouTube channel. And now, let's start the interview from me to you. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, for both Eastern Landscape and for New the York streets will kill us a walk like Pistol Pete and Pappy Mason. Gave the young boys admiration. Prince from Queens and Fritz from all man. the street legends. The judge, I'm sorry. Kiss and Charles, Nicky Barnes, Mr. 70s. But there's a Middle long Girl list of high profile celebrities. But with all of the Columbus crew, Philadelphia Union ties, and everything in general, we got to give this man the round of applause that he deserves with it. Daylight saving sign over here, as you know, after y'all had daylight saving sign over there. How's always the communication with your mom as well as your wonderful siblings, especially with one sibling already in Dusseldorf, I assume with that. But how's the yeah. communication always during this time of this year? Yeah, it's good. I didn't even know that the, you guys' clocks went back. Um, yep. <laughs> that's good. To, that's good. To, that's good to, so it was last night, I bet. Yep, um, five hours. Okay, now we're back to five hours. No, it's been good. Um, you know, we always talk. We always try and try and get a FaceTime in once once a week or once every two weeks. Um, so it's been good. So let me ask you, because you had a classic Halloween costume with your friend Dylan two years ago in terms of having the white man can't jump with that. Did you do anything for any Halloween this year in terms of any quick get up? Mm. Or you too busy with the schedule to do it this year? Yeah, this year was uh, it was unfortunate. I was gonna have a Halloween party, um, but then a couple weeks um, before the game, they threw they threw the whole game on Tuesday, so um, we couldn't. I was gonna have some uh, some Middlesbrough uh, uh, teammates to the party, and and then maybe get some city guys, but we uh, we had no time in between, so unfortunately, I wasn't able to uh, to dress up. Would you dress up as? Well, believe it or not, I was the, um, you know, the emoji that they use in terms of the amulet emoji. It's like this eye emoji that we see a lot of people use. It's like that yeah. emoji. It was just so funny because I saw a lot of my friends, a lot of women actually have that emoji. And I was like, I need to do this because you guys post it everywhere with this and I see it constantly. So <laughs> it was like a whole thing, man, where no one had it as a costume. And I just decided I want to always try to be original with it. So I yeah. like that. Yeah, I like that. I, I'm gonna need to see a picture of that though. Oh, I got you, man. Yo, no, yo, with how two, with how the two ones that I made for it, it was crazy here in New York in terms of the Halloween weekend, and it, it worked out perfectly, man. Nice. I, I used nice. the spray paint and all that. So would you <laughs> would you consider that your best costume in terms of that two years ago? Because that was truly funny, man, and really, really. Original and then some. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I would say that that was probably it was actually I think it was his idea, um, and uh, I, I would say it's probably one of the best I've I've come up with. Yeah. Well, let me also ask you another jovial moment because yesterday I don't know if you saw Gio Reyna, he was able to get another goal and scoring from the penalty spot, and he went and busted out the Antonio Brown put that S on celebration. Oh, <laughs> Did you see it? Did you see it yet or no? I I saw his goal. I didn't see. I, I didn't see him do the dance, but now I have to go look. I'm gonna have to go find that. But sweet. How was it? Oh, it, it was on point. Like Gio yeah, had okay. that casual, cool swag that people would Yeah, wear. he does. It, it's truly that Jersey tri-state area up here in terms of that for him. And mm -hmm. then of course, you know, Christian doing the gritty whenever he has scored, obviously early mm -hmm. shit, you guys. And Orlando against Panama and also doing it for Chelsea. I wanted to ask you first, not only in terms of his celebration and how you rate it, but if you ever scored a goal in any match, what would be your celebration dance, Sir Stefan? Uh, oh, oh, man. Um, I've never thought of that, to be honest. <laughs> 
It's a good one. That is a good one. I don't know, man. I don't know. You got to get. I'm gonna have to get back to you on that one. Well, no, no doubt. It, if you guys go all the way, semifinals, finals, all the way through in Qatar. If you, I, I'll have one for that. I'll have one for that. For okay. Sure. All right. We'll for keep sure. it. We'll keep it posted on that. We'll keep I'm, it. Uh, yeah, I'm not the. Uh, I don't know all the names of the dances and all that stuff. I just go out whenever I'm at the. <laughs> whenever, rarely whenever I'm at the uh, the <laughs> bars or whatever, and I'm dancing. I just kind of go with the beat. I, yeah. So I'll get back to you on that. I'll do some practice. Hey, you working on the groove in terms of on the field and almost getting your dribble at the level where you're dribbling on the field. That's the dance moves right there and doing it in that way. Uh, you know, I wanted to ask you because you with Voice Now had the launch on this past week, I think Friday in terms of with the U.S. soccer program, of course, and having that great partnership you have with them. The hoodies are fire. Everyone loves them in terms of the quality. You guys are developing some incredible um, attire because between that, what you launched with the One Football Now event in Manchester, your hoodie game, and you've been designing them, man. Like, you've been mm -hmm. designing these hoodies. Can you talk about the thought process with that and how U.S. Soccer has really been that committed partner for you and with Alex with Voice Now? Yeah, we've been, we've done, uh, yeah, two two clothing lines now. And like you said, the, the quality and, and – the uh, the brands that we've done uh, the collabs with have been very very supportive, um, which has been amazing. Um, and they've come come through just connections, um, different people that we know, and and wanting to um, help give voice uh, uh, some more some more eyes, more of a platform, um, and, and to be able to do that through clothing, which I I, um, I like fashion. I, I like to. Uh, I like all that stuff, being creative and, and making making different um, pieces. So for this uh, U.S. Soccer and Voice Now collab for the World Cup, we we decided to, to focus on um, like love. Um, and for yeah, for the for the pieces, it's it's love conquers all. Um, and we we truly believe that um, with Voice Now and, and in the world and what I what how my values and how i was raised um i do believe that love conquers all and then um equality comes through love and, and understanding and and um having an open heart heart and open mind um so it's it's been amazing to see all the sales and and all that money goes to um the the voice now uh foundation so um it is really awesome to see all the support and 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 it's awesome to see that people actually love the uh, love the pieces and just the events that you and Alex have done, as I mentioned, with One Football, with the Manchester event, with how that looked like a museum that had been there for about 10 years, with how that set up was tremendous, man. And then the Miami event in the 305, we'll talk about 305 in terms of any 305 enjoyment for you with that. You talk about just the growth in these two years with this great foundation that you and Alex set up and how could you foresee in this level, this growth, how your mom has been tremendous posting it, having her energy towards it, you know, because you have the ambitions, you know, for it and for the cause deep to you more your heart. But the growth has been truly tremendous for, for you guys. Yeah, thank you, man. It, it, it really has been. Um, and no, I couldn't have foreseen it um, really, truly. Um, I think it, it goes down to to the type of people we have that Alex and I have um, around us, um, our friends, our family, our our, um, our teams, our teammates, and and um, our fans, and then teammates that we've um, that we've um, come across in the past um, that have been su supporting and and uh, wanting to to give back as well. Um, so it's been amazing, um, and we couldn't have done it without all those people and. and um, and, and all those people have have given so much, um, and it, and it really means means a lot to to Alex and I, mm -hmm. um, and, and to these kids that we're helping as well, um, and, and to the Boys and Girls Club of America, which is where ninety ninety percent of our donations go to, um, and, and so it it, it it's very um, yeah my mom yeah, talking about my mom, it's just a very 
when, when she and I talk about it, it's just very proud, um, mm -hmm. very proud moment, very proud um, thing we've created, um, kind of legacy, because um, we want to we want to push voice now into the future and, and down the down the road, um, keep it within the families and, and hopefully the soccer family and keep it growing and growing and growing. Um, so uh, it, it's been definitely a learning process. Um, but yeah, we've done a lot of cool stuff. Um, and we have a lot of cool ideas uh, to, to hopefully come in the future. And what's the thing that you learned the most from this whole process that's been valuable that you now already have a, a further um, comfortable grasp of? that a lot of people want to give back um and, and they they will give their time and, and energy and efforts and and um and resources um they just need to to kind of have like a little push or have some info or details or um yeah just need a little support on, on like how to do it um on how to on how to find ways to to give back so um yeah, I'll say that. And speaking of giving Matt, that food bank that you had um, with Middlesbrough Community seemed like you really enjoyed that community, really already adopting you in that way as someone knowing how you really are that generous soul that you are. Can you talk about how that vibe was with that event? Yeah, it was really nice um, yesterday at the game. Um, yeah, the, they're so grateful and and um those they're such big supporters of of Middlesbrough so um that's the least that I can do I I um I hold community um in a very um big place in my heart um so my community my family my friends my my teammates fans um I always want to give my best for them and and um I always want them to be looked after um so anytime that I can kind of give back and um yeah put some smiles on some people's faces and and making a an easier time for them I, I'll, I'll try to do that and deep in your heart um as i want to express like condolences towards like um you know passing of your nani going up above in terms of heaven with that man and how Thank you. definitely man and and that performance that you had against austin trusty in birmingham city and getting that one nil win and michael carrick's first um, game for you all and you know just you having that post about it you talk about how you know deep that day was those two days and that performance that you had and going against Austin who's having such a terrific season for Birmingham City yeah that was special that was a uh, definitely a time a good week that I'll forever remember uh yeah my my grandma Noni she was uh she was a special person she she took in um my me and my two sisters who were half black um and my my white mother um she took us in day one um like they were like we were family um right off the bat and and yeah she was she was just had a big heart she was a uh a librarian at the the local elementary school so right um she loved kids and and loved to uh to give back as well so um i definitely have some uh hold some core values from from spending some time so much time with her and and um yeah brought the family closer and, and now she's up in heaven with with her with her husband grandpa and uh, my grandpa and uh and looking down looking down and watching me watching us and then looking down smiling in terms of how you really have become barrel's keeper right there in this lone with man city and having the process yesterday against Bristol City with the 1-1 draw after getting that big win against Wigan, of course, Birmingham City, that win. How's it been like working with Michael Carrick so far as new manager there and just like with the vibes of the team growing in an uptick um, before this World Cup break? He's been, Michael's been, uh, he's been class, man. He, he's uh, everything we needed. Um, we have a lot of talent. We have a lot of um, motivation and passion and belief. Um, we just needed um, direction and, and some details and some um, some yeah positive like reinforcement that we can play and that we're good. And we just needed some leadership. Um, 
from from the coaching staff, which is everything that Michael's given us. And, and he's very calm. He's very poised. He's very smart. Um, he knows the game very well. Obviously, he had a, an amazing career um, and has won a lot of trophies. Um, so it's it's been nothing but um, positive and a lot of fun and um, very promising um, under him. So uh, we just got to keep keep working and keep uh, trying to get better each and every day. Speaking of managers, of course, with you still being Man City, true and true, with one Pep Guardiola as your manager there. Uh, with that, um, I talked to Matt Turner last month. Um, during the U.S. Uh, friendlies before the Japan game, and I asked him about any story that he had with Mikel Arteta and how intense Mikel Arteta is, as you have had to probably deal with in terms of him, and how he had a moment where he shoved him in practice, but shoved him in a way where it was still an encouraging shove. Uh, with how Pep is both intense, but he has that sense of humor. You have any like funny stories in terms of that intensity or? just how he is in terms of practice that always stands out for you? Yeah, I'll say um, after the uh, after the Liverpool game, when I uh, made that mistake for their goal and Mane came and scored. Um, after that, we got we got off the plane and we were waiting for our bags and uh, he came up to me and he like grabbed me by the, uh, the back of the neck and it was just like, um, what do you say? It's like I love that you have the balls. You have such big balls to keep playing after after that mistake and and um, after that goal and such a big stage. You have the balls to keep playing and keep going. And I'm so proud of you. Um, so that was a uh, that was a very uh, yeah nice moment for <laughs> although it was, it was a pretty terrible moment um, for myself and for the team as we got knocked out of the FA Cup. Um, that was a nice moment. Um, for, for confidence wise and, and, and all that. And speaking of managers, a manager that you know going to your MLS days, now of course, USMMT coach and great Burhalter, and how just five years ago when you were in preseason Columbus crew and winning that job and getting that position and how it just led towards you being where you're at today, as well as of course, the stuff in the past that we'll also talk about in a bit, um, you know, for you, because Greg, you know, he has, to me, a very interesting personality in regards to not only his North Carolina Tar Heels love, but sometimes in the games he'll have these um, behind the back passes with the tempo. Where he has a good mix of both serious, but also you can really be able to talk to him and be a people person. How's been that relationship for you with him and the level of trust that he has really in you because of me having to slap down certain people in the fan base that have to understand that, hey, there's a reason why this man is still in the fold to really be the starting goalkeeper in guitar. And it's not just because of your relationship with Greg, but with how he's able to see the qualities in you as a leader and also just a player. You, you talk about your relationship with him over these half decade. Yeah, it's been, uh, it, it, it was a really good time in Columbus. Um, I learned a lot under him. Um, on and off the field, he, he's a yeah, he's a he's a competitor. He he loves to win, hates to lose. Um, is always trying to get better. Is always trying to find new ways to 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 grow and, and to teach his players how to see the game in a different way. Um, and um, he yeah, he's given me tons of support um, ever since. I came to Columbus um, up until now, and, and um, he's always been there. Um, yeah, just as a friend, but then as a coach as well. And and when we get go into camp, it's it's always yeah, it's always good. It's always positive. He's he's always trying to make camp and and the culture within the team very um, very positive and, and a really good environment to be in. Uh, family like or uh, family oriented. Um, culture to be to be in so it's it's always a, a pleasure to be um the national team do you wish that maryland was still in the acc to give his um tar hill some defeats <laughs> you, you still that'd be it? nice that would be nice to get some bragging rights <laughs> yeah well you know someone that also really um has a lot of reverence for you is someone that you looked up to when you were watching the premier league review show 
with your own dad with that. And that's Tim Howard. And then having that conversation with Tim earlier this year and how he said it was an honor for him to talk to you about it. It was like a casual conversation where if people didn't know, like it's obviously a guy that you looked up to and led to the inspiration for you. How was that whole moment in terms of hearing that from him um, after you just had that talk? Yeah, no, that was very, very humbling. He, he's obviously, he's a legend. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, I could go all day just talking all about the good things about him on and off the field um, and, and how much he's done for me um, on on and off the field as well, um, just as a role model. Um, but yeah, it, it was great to, it, it was great to have that conversation with him. And, and that felt like a really real conversation um, between he and I and, um, and uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been a little while since we had that conversation. And, uh, mm -hmm. But now he's a great guy, um, and um, again, he's very supportive um, of not just me on the field, but also off the field with Voice Now. He's been very supportive, so um, I do really appreciate that, and and, um, and it goes a long way for sure. And speaking of great guys and characters on um, the US MMT, you know, I talked to Wes McKinney last month with Tyler Adams, and. You know, he was saying that he was the best FIFA player on the team and how, hmm. you know, Weston can be funny in terms of the IG, in terms of the comments and everything. Who for you is that funniest person on the team, in the group at the moment um, that just makes you all laugh any single time? With U.S. soccer? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say it, but I'm going to have to go with Weston. <laughs> he's just a he's just a clown man he's he's a character loves to loves to smile loves to joke around have fun um and it's good man you, you need you need guys like that on the team you had reggie cannon talk about how he was um handling brandon Harrison in pokemon in terms of that whole thing <laughs> is is that part of the team <laughs> team building experience in terms of that a fifa or uh -oh. How's how's that the team on experience in terms of seeing those those Pokemon battles from them right there? <laughs> oh, I've heard nothing about these Pokemon battles, but I would I would I would say that Reggie is another character, is character too, clown too on the uh, on the team, and and just is an amazing guy, amazing competitor, um, and then is very sarcastic and and um, very very. Uh, <laughs> It's just very dry humor, but he, he's he's really funny and really good guy. And two, you know, other great individuals near and dear to your heart of many is, of course, your friend Raheem doing the thing in terms of being at least so supportive of you, being a ride or die for you, as well as your younger brother, Ben. And I see Ben getting into soccer and doing this mm -hmm. thing and how your mom is, like, very proud about that. You talk about that bond of you first, of course, being the older brother that you are towards Ben and your other siblings, as well as Raheem and that growing, growing bond that you two have. Yeah, Raheem, it, it's, uh, <laughs> I, so I met him uh, officially at my, uh, the Voice Now One Football launch party. Um, and you know, Raheem, just his, uh, um, his energy, man, he, he's, <laughs> He's loud. He's um, he loves being center of attention. And I love that. Um, and he's yeah, like you said, he's been very very supportive and and a voice now of myself of uh, my career. Um, and you need people like that. And um, who he was generous enough to to have us at his have voice now um, in his um, Miami uh, uh, runway fashion show um, this past June. And so. To be, I think we're the only charity there um, in, in the in the fashion show, and it was cool to see the other um, the other brands because they were they were uh, yeah they had some dope brands. Um, so it, it was it was very um, it was special to be to I mean uh, in a little mini uh, fashion show uh, with Voice Now it was really cool, and, and we got all the voice the Voice Now team together down there, so um, that was awesome and. Yeah, my brother Ben, he, he yeah, sixteen years old, yeah, in high school, chasing the girls. Um, but yeah, he like lo he he loves soccer and and he he's really dedicated, man. He he, he works out, he eats really healthy, he um he, he really wants it. So um, I, I'm really proud of him, and it's fun to watch him him grow up. And speaking of high school, ten years ago when you were in your whole high school flow, 
in senior year and how this mm. schedule for you, man, in terms of having to deal with Downington West, in terms of having to be part of Philadelphia Union's first real youth team and getting that generation Adidas Cup. How was that schedule for you senior year? Because you had all of these different teams to handle and everything. Can you can you just jot that down? How that schedule was on just a daily basis during your senior year, man? Yeah, man, it was a blur. If I yeah, it was a blur. I I can't remember everything. I mean, it was kind of a little while ago too as well, but um, almost ten years ago. Um, but it was a lot of fun, a lot of soccer being played, uh, a lot of school missed. I think my mom said that I missed around like 50 days of school that year. Um, so uh, a lot of traveling, a lot of, a lot of soccer, um, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Like you said, when the, uh, the generation Adidas cup, uh, with the, with the Philly boys, that was fun. Um, and then playing high school and, 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 um, FC Delco and all that. And then going to Maryland. Yeah. That was a, that was a great year. And then senior year, but it was a love senior year. No doubt about that, man. And you know you're smart when you can miss 50 days of school and then still go to a school like Maryland. Like <laughs> right? that, that that is real quality in terms of the versatility with that. We talked about in terms of Miami and being able, especially with how tight the schedules are for players, like not only of course with the pandemic, but in terms of then the World Cup and being able to get some rest and being able to get your mind off of playing football in the intensity. How the 305 is able to serve as just a, a, a reset to be able just to enjoy your whole life and everything with that. You got a picture with Cascade holding you down right there <laughs> at Liv. Would you say Liv over 11 over Story Mansion is your favorite? Jeez. Right? Kiki on the River. Like, what would it be, sir? Oh, what? man. I haven't I haven't been to Kiki on the River yet, to be honest. Um, it, is certainly, it is certainly worth it. It's certainly worth the time. I know. <laughs> yeah, I'll... I'll I'll have to check that out next year. Um, nah, I mean, I like, yeah, Liv, Liv's, Liv's great, man. Uh, Liv's great, 11's great. I mean, it's hard to miss in Miami. Well, let me ask you, man, because of now with this whole inside World Cup building and being able just to be in like a good state of form with Middlesbrough and overcoming early season with the knee in terms of it and just having a good vibe with Michael Carrot at the moment. Have you told at least Phil Fulton or John Stones, hey, y'all, like, y'all know what's coming. Y'all know what's coming in terms of it, as well as, of course, the quality that you face in terms of Wells and Iran in that group and just focusing on the day-to-day -day getting there, just getting there and finishing out with Middlesbrough. You just talk about your mindset at the moment, going in to this last week of the club season at the moment and then for Qatar. Yeah, the uh, my mental my mental state right now is really good, um, really clear. Um, I'm enjoying my my playing. I'm enjoying um, just being out there and, and honestly having the opportunity. Um, God's been so gracious and and kind to to give me this opportunity. And um, with Middlesbrough and and I, there's great guys on the team. Uh, the fans are great, hardworking fans. Um, and 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 we wanna we wanna make them happy and make them proud and yeah the, the beginning of the season has been tough with new team and and um different coaches and the knee and so i feel like i'm settled now and and um i'm doing all the right things that i need to do to stay healthy and, and to, to stay on that field so um and, and just getting a run of games and and um training consistently um has yeah is making me feel um more like myself. That's good. Can you believe that Kyle Walker did not have Sour Patch Kids? Like, when you had the video with him, it's like, can you believe that he did not have Sour Patch Kids growing up? England, man. Their taste buds are different over here. <laughs> well, a few more questions, man, before we get out of here with that. Um, you know, when you moved to SC Freiburg and how much of a big move that was to do with that, and going over to Germany the first time and having to deal with that period of loneliness while playing, like what was the thing that you learned about yourself in dealing, combating that loneliness and getting through that period of with Freiburg? Wow. Um, yeah, I'd say it took me a couple of years to, to kind of look back on that. And, and honestly, I, 
life's been so fast that I haven't even really been able to fully do that. Um, but I think one of the, the few times that I have had some rest of time, I think like this past summer where I've been able to, uh, to reflect, I think, um, like creating a community of where I'm at and being, um, open-minded and, and, um, intentional with creating a community where I am like here in Middlesbrough and, and, um, giving more energy to teammates and, and, um, trying to make more plans with them and, and trying to make a life, um, over here, um, instead of just kind of hiding and hiding back in my apartment and going to go to training and, and kind of feel bad and bad and sorry for myself. Um, so yeah, I've, I've definitely tried to, to create a stronger community over here than, um, I did in Freiburg. Speaking of strong communities, I don't know if you had a chance to see this, but you know, the Australian um, national team, the soccer rules, they really were vocal in regards mm -hmm. to how they felt about Tar with that and really had a wonderful statement, honestly, towards um, how they felt in regards to migrant workers. And then you have FIFA doing FIFA nonsense things and trying to say you don't want any players or any media to try to be vocal about the, you know, human rights issues that are there. Your thoughts on just FIFA doing that and how, you know, your reaction to wars, whether if you feel like you wanted to say something about that, that you, if FIFA wouldn't intimidate you with that, if you felt that way to, to voice out on anything. Yeah, I think that's, that's, this is exactly why we, we at Voice Now created this clothing line with U.S. Soccer and, um, and made the statement that love conquers all because um, at the end of the day, um, love wouldn't do all the um, love wouldn't make all those decisions that FIFA has made for this World Cup um, human rights decisions and, and treating um, those people so poorly um, and so with Voice Now we wanted to focus on on love and um, through through love become, or comes equality and and, um, and growth um and peace and that's exactly what we're we're working towards that voice now um and so we're trying to have that that fashion line speak for um speak for itself and your top five music artists right now sir to close out on this sir Stephen, what be the top five for you my man who would be in that top five uh yeah i'm gonna have to go with drake with his new album i mean he just never misses and he changes up his, his, his genre of music every time it's it's incredible um as long as you don't give so, him a blackberry as long as you don't give him a blackberry to freestyle that's all i can say <laughs> okay um drake um i always gotta rock with future um um i love cascade i love that type of music um i'm, I'm gonna have to go with justin bieber he's always at the top Wow, my list. Shout out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I saw he was at the LAFC MLS Cup final, Philly final last night. That was dope. Um, last one. Let's go with um oh man. Put me on the spot here, bro. Well, I mean, some of your teammates went to the Jack Harlow. I mean, Christian went to the Jack Harlow concert the other night. Yeah, at Wembley. Yeah, he was in Manchester the other night as well. I mean, little baby. Love little baby, Majee Jordan. Mm -hmm. Those are those are up there. No doubt, sir. Well, I mean, clearly this man is having the hype playlist going into the games right there. Is sir stepping in? I just wanted to ask you, man, in terms of any other sport, because you being a PA kid all the way through, who were your other teams and other sport? Were you a Sixers fan growing up? Were you Eagles fan? Like, how, how what was the team set up for you as fandom? I I uh, all all Philly teams, um, Flyers, 76ers, Eagles. Um, I played baseball and basketball growing up as well. So and and then I would always play football just with friends or or my family. Um, so I loved all sports and I still do. Um, the Phillies had it rough this World Series and then the Union yeah. missed out as well, which was so it's tough. But the the Eagles. Um, yeah, the Eagles are what are they? Eight and zero right now, seven and zero, which is insane. 
Um, so we're all rocking behind them and, and um, we're all proud of, of what the Phillies and, and, and the union have done. Um, and so it's been a good year. Hopefully we can lift uh, at least one trophy. That'd be nice. Did you see the bell go in terms of that yesterday and having, you know, your union tie still, you Mark McKenzie and everything. When you saw how, and that was probably the best MLS cup final outside of, you know, yours that you were in. What's your, what, what was your thoughts on that moment there? Um, yeah, that was, I mean, it was a crazy back and forth game. I, I couldn't believe, yeah, all the goals and, and then the shootout. Um, and, uh, yeah, a really unfortunate injury for Crepo. Um, so I wish him all the best and, and um, a speedy recovery. Uh, but it, it was a it was a pleasure to watch and fun to watch. And um, yeah, I was kind of reminiscing uh, of my MLS days. Uh, but yeah, it was tough, tough for the Philly boys and Jim Curtin. I uh, I wanted them to get it. They they deserved it. Well, Jim Curtin knows that you got to love him through and through with the top manager that he is. And always love all the way, sir. We got to give you a round of applause for the great time. We wish you well all the way to great Zach. Stephanie, ladies and gentlemen. And turn the U.S. and Steve Hills, bro. Now and all that. Giving the Jimmy Cook some hell. Yeah. Set it in rose gold. Hey. Like so you know how that you get the big call. I've been calling that hair good. Stay well. Oh, I Bye-bye. even know.